Hey golf people, today we're discussing a brand new simulator from a Korean company. Golf Zone has been known historically as building big expensive golf simulators for commercial environments, but this unit behind me, the Golf Zone Wave, is their first attempt at really getting into the home simulator market with a more budget-friendly offering that sits in the mid-range for golf simulators. It's a simulator that I've been waiting for two years to be released since they first announced it. It's gone through a couple of iterations and now it's finally ready for sale. If you just want my quick take, I will say this is a very compelling offering. Being a full golf simulator with extremely accurate putting capabilities, it's got a large course library with some of the best graphics of any I've come across. In fact, it just might be the best lower budget simulator offering that I've tried, especially if you're trying to build a fun, engaging, family-friendly environment. But there are two things that I think will hold a lot of folks back, and so we'll discuss that here today as we unbox this thing. I'm gonna set it up, show you how it connects, how it works, and we're gonna play a few holes of simulator golf with the Golf Zone Wave. Let's get into it. So first, let's talk about the unboxing experience. If you know me, you know that I actually judge golf technology by the packaging in a lot of ways. You can usually see if something is quality just by how the packaging is constructed. Think about Apple and what they did to making the experience of opening that new iPhone or iPad. Well, the same thing goes. When I get cheap things, the packaging looks cheap. When I get high-end, nice things, the packaging looks nice. Well, the Golf Zone Wave packaging looks very nice. It's clean, it's organized. It looks top notch. Inside, in addition to the Wave device itself, which is a dual device, it's both optical and Doppler. It's got a camera on it. It's got a very nice carrying case. You've got your power cables. Of course, you've got your manual, but hiding underneath it all is what really makes this unit stand out. It is a putting mat, and it's going to allow you to get really accurate putting physics inside the software. Now, because this is a Korean brand, I found the instructions to be a little bit lackluster. I also found that the setup process itself is a little bit cumbersome. Unlike some other simulators, when you download the software, you have to actually download the entire course library that Golf Zone offers. It's over 70 gigabytes, and it took me, if you can believe it, almost three hours to install the software. So that right there is gonna be a little bit overwhelming for some folks. I'm not gonna go through the entire exact setup process here, but there is a video I will link to if you're looking for what Golf Zone recommends. Now I set this up on a PC, but they also have this available if you just wanna use an iPad or a mobile device as well. You can download the app from the App Store and get it done that way. But I wanted to set it up in my simulator room with all that nice, beautiful, projection glory, and so I used a gaming PC here. Now another drawback of this device, which will hold a lot of folks back, is going to be the space requirements needed to set up the Golf Zone Wave. You need a minimum of six and a half feet behind the ball, which isn't too bad. But what will be a little tricky for folks is that you need 11 and a half feet in front of you. So you really need a full 18 feet of space in order to run the Golf Zone Wave. This also means that if you're looking to use this with maybe a net outdoors, or even in your garage or something, you're gonna need a very tall net or you're not gonna be able to be using wedges and some of those lower irons in your bag. Now the good news is that space requirement gives this device, which again uses both Doppler and a camera on board, it gives it a great opportunity to track ball flight and really give, I think, extremely accurate carry numbers, spin numbers, and even club data. The data points for the Golf Zone Wave are pretty impressive. It has just about everything you would want. Here you can see on screen what it does track. The unit itself being a little smaller lends itself to being more mobile. You can actually set this up at a golf range. Like I said, you could put a net in your backyard. You could set it up in an indoor environment. The size makes it very versatile, and the case that comes with it, again, is a nice feature. In terms of battery life, you can expect about four hours from what I can see using the simulator. So you're definitely gonna be able to get a round or two of simulator golf in before having to charge this up or keep it plugged into AC power. Using the range feature as well as using the simulator feature of the Golf Zone Wave, I found the numbers to be really, 
really accurate, better than I thought they would for a device that looks like this indoors. A lot of times, smaller Doppler devices struggle indoors. From my testing, I found carry numbers to be in line, shot shape to be in line with what I expect, and spin numbers to be within 100 to 200 RPM. But where this thing really shines for me in terms of accuracy is in putting. That is something that so many simulators struggle with with things like the Garmin R10, the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. Granted, they are much less expensive, but those units don't even give you the opportunity to do any type of putting within the simulation or within gameplay. When you get into things like the Mevo Plus, the Bushnell Launch Pro, the Skytrack, there is putting, but sometimes it can be a little bit wonky. Having this mat, having sensors on both sides of the ball, judging which way it spins and how fast it comes off the club face, I found the putting to be one of the most pleasant putting experiences for there any simulator I've ever tried. And so that is, to me, a huge selling point of the Golf Zone Wave. Now, one of the things that makes this unit different from everything else on the market is it's really a simulator first. A lot of the other solutions out on the market, things we've tested on this show, they're really launch monitors that have had simulator capabilities added to them, but they weren't thought of as a simulator first. That's different here with the Golf Zone Wave. The simulator experience is what this thing is really all about. And while you can use the Wave to judge your numbers, even create some averages, things like that, it's not really what this unit was developed for. So if you're the type of person that obsesses over the numbers, you wanna gap your bag, you wanna create spreadsheets, you wanna see a wedge matrix, that sort of thing, this would probably not be the device for you. But if you're the person who wants to build a fun, interactive experience, inside of your house and really feel like you're stepping out onto a golf course somewhere in the world, this might just be the one for you. The best way that I can explain the Golf Zone Wave is to me it feels like an arcade experience or something that you might experience at Top Golf, Pop Stroke, one of those types of facilities. It's got this subtle calming piano music in the background of the menus, letting you know which player is up, letting you know what the caddy recommends. I think some people will find that cheesy and hokey and others will find that simply fun. As a father with small children, the process of playing a round of golf with my kids was pretty seamless and intuitive for them. With my Bushnell Launch Pro, for instance, there's a very narrow area you've got to place the ball with a Skytrack, you've got that dot. Well, with the Golf Zone Wave, you've got a pretty ample area there to place the ball, and I didn't see it missing any shots indoors, which again is a real win when you've got kids. So yeah, I think this is probably the most fun simulator experience that I've ever had. I actually plan on inviting some of my neighbors over here to have a little fun in the studio this week. That's what I think this thing is best meant for as a social experience. If that is you, if you're looking more for an experience and for a fun time, I think you're going to enjoy the Golf Zone Wave and it's one you should definitely put on your short list. All right, let's talk about pricing of this new Golf Zone Wave. So the MSRP at launch is $3,995. Now that's gonna be about $1,000 more than things like the Bushnell Launch Pro or the Skytrack Plus. Now, if we talk about subscriptions, I think this is where the Wave actually wins out, believe it or not. So there's two main subscription options, a basic subscription and a premium subscription. Basically, the difference is going to be in how many courses you have access to. Out of the box, basically with no subscription, you're gonna get access to three courses, including Kiowa Island, which is a course I've actually played in real life, and it's a lot of fun. You're also gonna get a course that's in Japan and one in Korea. If you step up to a basic subscription, you're now going to get access to 18 courses in the library for $99 a year. They also have three-year subscription options, which saves you a little bit of money. And there's a premium subscription for $199 a year. Again, there's a three-year option that could save you a little bit there. And that's gonna give you access to all 148 courses in the Golf Zone Wave library. So for a maximum subscription cost of $200 a year and you're still getting everything else, I think that actually is very good value and it's going to give some competition to those other devices that I mentioned. All right, it's that time. Let me show you what it's like to actually use this simulator and play a simulated round of golf with the Golf Zone Wave. And we're gonna go stroke. into stroke, stroke mode. This is actually playing a simulated Please round of golf. Now looking at the options here, these are a lot of clubs. I don't know about you, but I have never heard of a lot of Asian clubs on this. I think most of these are real. 
but there might even be some golf zone made up courses as well because you've got just golf zone courses here. So I'm actually gonna bounce into the USA here. I'm gonna go ahead and play Kiowa Island. This is a very difficult course. In real life, I think I shot like 91 here. <laughs> it was a very tough day. We'll see if we can do a little bit better here on the simulator. Please configure the course settings. I'm gonna not concede any putts because I really wanna try this putting mat. You can do green conditions faster, normal, or fastest. We'll go with just faster. The putting green thin, normal, or thick. We'll go with a normal putting grid. We can continue putting off or on. Not exactly sure what that is. Double concede though means once you're on the green, it's just going to give you a score. We're gonna take that off because again, I wanna put everything out. You can do a certain amount of mulligans or you can make your mulligans unlimited, which is what I'll do here. It would be nice to see like tournament pins, hard pins, easy pins. This is literally telling you where on the green that pin's gonna be. So we're just gonna go with random. Wind, normal. I'm actually, <laughs> I played it in really normal conditions and normal there is super windy. So I'm actually gonna go with light wind here because I wanna see I want to actually play some decent golf, <laughs> to be honest with you. And uh, we're going to go ahead and hit round starts now. start round. All right, now I can tell you from experience, this is exactly what Kiowa Island looks like. Very, very good graphics here with the golf zone. I think that's one thing this thing really excels at. The other thing I can tell you is that when I played this course in real life, I drove it into the left there, into, I think, a bunker up on that hill. It was a bad start. Let's see if we can do a little bit better here today. <laughs> Driver in hand. Now it's heading left. Yeah, that's about what I did in real life. Let's see how far this thing goes. Rough. Layer one, it's your turn to swing. <laughs> I guess that is uh, art imitating life because that's exactly, almost exactly the shot I had. Now I've got 151 here to the pin. Looks like that thing went about 230, which sounds about right. It wasn't a great swing. I didn't really catch all that one. 260 would be about average when I'm really striking the ball well. 230, I think, is about right. So we got 151. We're in the rough here. Now, one thing I want to show you, and one thing I really like about the golf zone is the fact that it says, you can see here, check the driving distance penalty. So because we're in this rough, we're actually going to have to hit it 10% further. There's no guesswork here. 10% of 151 yards is roughly 15 yards. So basically we have to hit a 165 shot here out of the rough. I'm kind of on this side lie where the ball would normally be a little above me. So we'll see if it kind of, I'm gonna aim out just a little bit further right than I normally would and see if that, we'll see how the game mechanics work here. Pretty good strike. Ooh, I didn't even know that tree was there. And it is pushing a little right to left. Player one, it's your turn Birdie to swing. Chance. Hit it straight in. And boy, that is a lot, a lot better than I did in real life at Kiowa Island, but I hit the shot I wanted to hit and I got the result I was hoping to get. We've got a straight putt here actually. We'll be testing here before the day is over a couple of putts, I'm sure, that are going to have quite a bit of break. But what's nice about this system is that you've got these stripes here. All right, and that gives you a really good way to align your putter. We have an 18 foot putt. We know it's 11 and a half feet to my screen. So I got to think about putting it basically one and a half screens worth give or take, okay? Maybe just a little further than one and a half. That's how I think about it when I'm doing simulator golf. See if we can hit a straight putt. Hardest thing to do in golf, right? It's a pretty good stroke, but just like real life, I pulled it a little bit. <laughs> Layer one, it's your turn to swing. Now remember, I chose, I chose no gimme, so we gotta put everything in the hole. Two and a half feet here, I don't think I'll miss this one. Now you hear all the graphics, you hear the sound effects with this thing. I think that makes it pretty fun, but I can see how some people think that's cheesy. All right, so it's gonna be up to you if you appreciate that or if you don't. Now you can of course always turn off all the sounds on this thing as well, but uh, I think it's kind of fun. 
All right, in real life, I actually drove it into that bunker, <laughs> hit a really bad drive. So hopefully we do a little bit better here in the simulator. Yeah, I caught that one pretty good, I think. Maybe just a little higher than I'd like. But let's see what the distance is. Fairway, player one. It's your turn to swing. All right, so 215 or so is what that drive was. I'd say that could be a little bit low, but who's to say? In fact, I didn't check the wind either. I think maybe we had the wind in our face. I didn't even realize it. In real life, I also had the wind in my face. That's the prevailing wind here at Kiowa. All right, so, hmm, we got a split fairway here, so we have a little bit of a decision to make, but I'm gonna go ahead and put, put my hybrid in my hand, and I'm gonna adjust the aim. Now, this is not as intuitive as I would think, on most systems, if you click into this map, you'd actually see your aim change, but it doesn't work that way. Although you do get a good idea of like, I need, a, I need to carry this about 160 yards basically to carry that little brook running through. If I do want to adjust my alignment, which I do, I'm going to actually literally hit the keys on the keyboard, the left and right arrows, and I'm going to adjust that just a little bit. All right, so we're al aligned where I want to be. I've got the hybrid in hand. It's a 220 club if I really catch it. 200 if I take my normal swing, 210 if I take a good swing at it. I'll take, you know, kind of a normal swing. I don't need to crush it. Yeah, that was a good one. So it should be, by rights, about 200 yard swing, I'd say. Okay, we got 196. Anyway, player one, it's your turn to swing. We got 196. I'm not completely warmed up, so we're close. That's all I can say is it's close in terms of distance. Maybe just a little bit short there, but maybe I only hit it 196. Again, wind also plays a little bit of a role on this simulator. So I've got 68 yards. That's a perfect 58 degree wedge for me with a nice smooth swing, not really going at it too hard. So. Let's see what we get. Oh, I caught that one pretty good. 80 yards there. Player one, it's your turn to swing. Chance. To the right side of the hole, six feet. It's nice to have this caddy, I gotta say. Because otherwise, there's a lot of guesswork with simulators. That's one kind of cool feature of this. So six feet right, 37 foot putt, fairly, well, it's half a foot up as well. So I gotta think about hitting this about three screens worth. Let's see what we can do. I think it was pretty good for distance. A little long, but not bad, really. I would take that for a lag putt. It's your turn to swing. Hmm. To the left, one cup. One cup to the left for such a short putt. That is quite the break. Seven feet, so I don't need to get it all the way to the screen. Let's see if we can get this accuracy correct. Mm, yeah, I hit it too hard. I hit it all the way to the screen, as you can see. So I just went right through the break. There we go. Well, a little bit of a shame there that we three putt, but uh, definitely those are the putts I hit. I find those putting to be really accurate on this device. We're gonna play one more hole. 191 yard par four. Relax and take the shot when you're ready. Now, one thing I've noticed, you may have heard the guy said it's a 291 yard par four, but up on screen you get 318 yards. So there's a couple of kinks that I've noticed. Another one that I've often heard using this system is they'll say something like, the wind is coming right to left, so make sure that you aim left. And again, it shouldn't be that way. It should be the opposite. If the wind is moving right to left, the ball, you should aim right because the ball is going to go left. So anyways, just be careful. Make sure you're actually looking up on screen, not just listening to the audio. All right, let's see what we do here. Driver in hand. Let's see if we hit a good one here to finish. I push that to the right. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely going a little right of my target. I hit it a little better though, too. 239. Player one, 
It's your turn. Now going right there didn't hurt me much because I actually maybe even have a better angle from over here. We've got 101 yards, but we've got that 10% distance penalty. I've got my pitching wedge in hand. This is my 120 club. With that uphill elevation, I think my this is my 120 club. I think if this was real life, this is what I'd be hitting. Let's see what happens. Hit it really well. Layer Ready. one, it's your turn Birdie to swing. Chads. I think it's left two cups. Pretty good result. Now we've got our third birdie chance here of the day. Definitely don't want a three putt, but I'd love to make one. I think it's good for distance. Is it good for direction? Oh, Player not bad. One, it's your turn to swing. I think of straight away. Honestly, I think of all the launch monitors I've reviewed on this show, in terms of putting, this has to be, if not the most accurate, right up there. And it could be the most accurate. We'll continue to test. Nice par. There's a par. <laughs> all right, guys, that's three holes at Kiwa. So to recap everything here, the pros of this thing are, first of all, it's a very fun experience. Second of all, the subscription pricing is very easy to understand. It's got a major course library, and I do think that they priced this unit very well. The negatives being you need a considerable amount of space, and while you can use the Wave to judge your numbers, even create some averages, things like that, it's not really what this unit was developed for. It was built for a fun, interactive simulator experience. If you got the space and you want the experience, the Golf Zone's a great option. There are some other great options out on the market. Here's a video if you wanna break down some of the pros and cons of what's out there right now. I just did this video a couple of months ago. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Please do hit subscribe and I'll catch you back real soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.